Let's talk about extrema. Extrema is the plural of extremum, and when we talk about extrema, we're talking about points on a function that are the extreme points. So for example, this red point right here at the end point, the left end point, is called a local or a relative minimum because it is a minimum compared to all the points around it. It is the smallest or the lowest point comparatively. Right here, we have what is called a global or an absolute max. It is the global max because it is the highest point on the entire function that we've created here from the left end point to the right end point. This is the highest point. Not only is that a global or an absolute max, but it's also a local max because it is the highest point in this particular neighborhood, in this area of points. Down here, we have the global minimum. Now this is a global minimum because it is the lowest value of the entire function. So global max, highest uh, value of the whole function, global min, the lowest value of the whole function. And of course, local mins and local maxes are extrema relative to the other points around it. So for example, here, this is not the highest point of the entire function. In fact, this local minimum on the left is actually greater than this lo uh, local max right here. But the reason why it's a local max is because relative to all of the points around it, it is a maximum. Here we have a local minimum. And finally, here's our last one. This is a local max right here. So our endpoints tend to be local max or min. And all interior points are local maxes and min when they are greater or less than all of the surrounding points around them. Now the question is, how do we know whether a point is an extremum? Well, it's very simple. Right here on this hill, we have a local max. In this valley, we have a local min. Why is this a max right here? Well, it's a max because our function increases and then stops and then it decreases. Or in other words, if this function is y, then y prime is positive on the left hand side and y prime is negative on the right hand side. So our derivative dy dx is changing from positive to negative. And of course the max is zero right in between. So we have a relative maximum when the derivative changes from positive to negative. If you ever forget, just make a, uh, a hill with your fingers and then you'll see where that max lies, positive to negative. Likewise, we have a min when y prime goes from negative, see we have a negative slope here, to positive. Here we have a positive slope. So, when our derivative changes from negative to positive, we have a local min. Now, does the derivative have to be zero at an extrema? And the answer is no, actually, no. Check this out. The derivative at this point doesn't exist. Here we have a cusp. However, this is still a max. The point does exist. Likewise, we could have, for example, a corner. The derivative at this point right here does not exist because the left-hand derivative does not equal the right-hand derivative at this point, or the limit doesn't. However, it's still a minimum. And so, there are a couple of points that we need to check out when investigating maxes and mins. We want to find where our derivative is equal to zero, like a hill or a valley, or where it doesn't exist. And that would give us either a corner or a cusp or a vertical tangent line, possibly.
although a vertical tangent line wouldn't actually be an extrema. However, we gotta check it out anyway. So when looking for extrema, we have to find what are called critical points. And critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. We will be finding a lot of critical points from here on in this section.